What's up carnivores, Zach here with American Smoke. And today we're gonna to talk about how to get more smoke flavor into your barbecue using a pellet smoker. It's a big subject. A lot of people are curious about it. You found this video, so I think you're probably one of them. Today, we're gonna to get into the top 10 ways to get her done. Let's get it. So getting into these top 10 ways to get more smoke flavor into your barbecue using a pellet smoker, uh, probably one of the number one ways that comes to my mind and what most people have heard of, although you may not have heard of it, if you're just getting into pellet smoking, you just got that new pellet smoker, you bit in your first bite of barbecue and it said, wow, this doesn't taste like I get down what I get over there at, you know, Smokey Joe's barbecue pit down the road or that, you know, my uncle used to make or something like that. And so you're like, how can I get that flavor? The number one method that most people employ is called a smoke tube. And I've got a video showing how to use one of these and why it works and so on and so forth. Uh, really all you do is just pack it full of pellets, you light it, and it emits more smoke into the chamber, imparting more smoke flavor onto your barbecue. Method number two, which is something that um, a lot of people are getting into and that I'm just now sort of getting into, I just got this thing, that is the pellet tray. And so the pellet tray works similar to the smoke tube, except you don't have to fill it and pack it in. You just lay them over into this. It works kind of like a snake method, if you've ever done that for charcoal smoking, but it just burns through the smoke tray and provide smoke throughout. And both of these are gonna offer somewhere between four and eight hours worth of smoke time. One thing about the tray is that it's easier to get wood chips into. That's the top two methods that you can easily take to increase your smoke flavor in your barbecue. Let's get on to method number three. Method number three comes in handy with the tools that we just mentioned, and that is to employ wood chips or wood chunks into your smoking process. Uh, when you're using a smoke tube, uh, chips are gonna be your best option, and I recommend no more than a three to one ratio pellets to wood chips because it's just gonna burn a lot faster and it's liable to create a uh, pocket inside your pellet tube that's gonna cause uh, the pellet tube to burn out if the wood chips burn before they ignite the pellets that follow. Wood chips come in so many different variations and they are a cheap option. They are not expensive, but you can get post, stoke, apple, hickory, whatever you want, usually around $5 or less per bag, and they greatly increase the smoke flavor on your barbecue as opposed to just using the smoke tube. Now you might find that it's a bit strong and you may not like it. There are a lot of people that say the use of the pellet tube or the tray creates what's called dirty smoke in the barbecue biz. Now, if you grew up eating barbecue that had dirty smoke on it, that might be what you prefer and it might just be what sets you over the top into the flavor realm that you're trying to get to, uh, employing some chips into your smoke tube. When it comes to the tray, it's a much easier. You lay pellets down, you put chips on top, and then it burns. Or something that I'm gonna get into is putting pellets into this tray and then setting some wood chunks over on top of the pellets and see can I get smoldering wood chunks burning just like I do in my Camp Chef Woodwind Pro, which I will say provides superior smoke flavor compared to my pit boss just using the pellet tubes. Make sure to uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel. That way you'll know when my uh, tests come up testing this pellet tray out to see what sort of results I get cooking chunks over my pellets. Next on the list is going to be incorporating and testing out different types of pellets. Once you get into the barbecue world and the pellet smoking world, you get to talking to your friends or getting on to American Smoke Carnivores on Facebook. Good group. Come over, see us. I'm in there every day. Once you get into that world and you get to talking to people, you're going to have people say, I like B&B brand, I like Bear Mountain, I like Kingsford, I like Sam's Club brand pellets, I like Lumberjack. And what you need to do is just give them a shot. See what you think about their flavor. See if it's kind of hitting on the palate the way that you want your smoke to hit. Different companies make different pellets, which means that they have different processes of making their pellets. And just like anything else in the natural world that people make, there's gonna be different qualities. 
And so you're gonna find things that you like. Maybe you're looking for more of a pure product like this right here where it's hickory. This is a hickory brand and it is gonna be mostly hickory. There might be some oak mixed in with it, but for the most part, you're gonna get more hickory flavor as opposed to if you use one of these blends like this championship blend, which is one of my favorite pellets as of late. I really, really like this B&B brand. Um, it's got uh, several different of the big hitters in it. I think it's got pecan, cherry, and post oak. And so it just produces some really good flavor on the barbecue. So I really like that. I'm a huge fan of post oak. And then there's these crazy things like this right here that I have not been able to break the seal on yet. I have not been able to try it. But this is garlic, onion, and paprika. Y'all let me know in the comment section down below. Have you tried these? What did you think? Did you go back for more? Was it not worth it? Because these are a little bit more expensive. And when you're wanting to buy briskets, you're wanting to save money somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Test your pellets, figure out which ones you like, ask around, learn from other people's experience, increase the flavor of the smoke on your barbecue by using good pellets. Now this next tip for getting more smoke flavor on your barbecue kind of feeds off of the last one, but it is um, it deserves its own mention. And that is charcoal pellets. We all know that you're not gonna find a better hamburger than one cooked over charcoal. You're not gonna find a better steak than one cooked over charcoal. And I know I just uh, fired some people up because they're like, what about that cast iron steak and that crust on there? Well, I like charcoal and most people like charcoal on their steaks. I'm not saying you can't make a delicious steak on cast iron, but that's not for this video. Today, we're talking about these charcoal pellets. Now, I have yet to find a brand that I think really shines above the rest as far as just charcoal pellets. Uh, this is from Royal Oak. I picked this up at Lowe's. Something you might need to know about these is they do burn hotter. And so uh, be prepared for that. You, you know, it's gonna burn a little faster and a little hotter. And so you might need to check. But what I do is I mix these in about 50-50 and I get the smoke from my pellets and then I get that burnt charcoal flavor onto my food as well. If I'm cooking beef especially, I'm gonna go most of the time with a 50-50 blend of the pellets and the charcoal pellets and the flavor is just so much better. And that's really all we're looking for in this video, right? How do we make our barbecue better? Try these out on your next cook. Maybe just go all charcoal. See what you think about that. That might be your new favorite. You never know. That's the great thing about barbecue. You're always finding something you like better than something you've had before. But make sure to try these out. Let me know what you think. Let's get on to the next tip. The next tip applies to pretty much all pellet smokers, but not all. There are some that don't fall into this category. Most pellet smokers have got what's called the smoke setting or smoke settings or P settings. And depending on which brand of pellet smoker you have and which make from that brand you have, uh, it's gonna determine whether or not you've got the smoke setting. If you've got it, then that allows you to set your smoker up uh, for at least the beginning of the cook to where it's ultra low and it produces a lot of smoke as compared to a higher temp on a pellet smoker. For my Pit Boss Vertical, it has a smoke setting and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll let it run on the smoke setting for about an hour before I crank up the temp and uh, you know, really get the heat into my proteins. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna only gonna burn at 130 degrees, so make sure that you don't run it the whole cook at that smoke setting, because what you're gonna do is you're just gonna ruin some meat, and uh, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. On my Camp Chef Woodwind Pro, it's got a 10 settings for smoke, so you can start at one, which is, you know, minimum smoke, and crank it all the way up to 10, which is gonna allow you to get the most smoke flavor out of the pellets that you're using. And you might say, well, why don't you always just run it on 10? Well, a lot of times if you're getting more smoke and you're you know, smoking something that's a little lighter, something that doesn't handle smoke as well, it can develop a bitter taste. And that's what they call the, the flavor of dirty smoke, bitter. And so you wanna be really careful about that, but you can incorporate the smoke setting into your next cook, get more smoke flavor on your barbecue and be the man or the woman or whatever. But it's gonna be good, I know that much. Let's get on to the next step. The next step is a slight deviation from the last step where you just start off on the smoke setting. And that's if, you know, if you're cooking a chicken or something like that, or something that you would typically would cook at a higher temp around 275 to 350, somewhere in there. When pellets burn at those temperatures, when you're trying to maintain that in your temperature, they're gonna burn super fast and they're gonna put off a lot less smoke. Whereas uh, if you go slower, lower, they're gonna have more smoke. 
right? So uh, a trick that you can use to get more smoke on, say like your chickens or your wings or something like that, is to start off low. Maybe you don't like the bitterness that you get from the smoke setting. Start off at 225 for the first 45 minutes to an hour and then crank it up to the temp that you want to cook at and that's going to get more smoke on those smaller cuts of protein that you need to cook a little bit faster. Now this step might kind of throw you off a little bit, uh, especially if you're new to barbecue and most of your experience comes from watching YouTubers make barbecue and competition guys making barbecue where the appearance matters more than just about anything. And what you see a lot of people doing is going super heavy with their barbecue rubs, right? Because it puts good color on the proteins and it provides exceptional uh, seasoning flavor onto the barbecue. But what happens is, is as you put that seasoning or whatever it is, the rub onto the, let's say ribs and you pack it on there and you've got this nice thick, pretty layer on there. What you've done is you have created a barrier as the air flows over the top of that seasoning and the smoke, it never is able to penetrate down into the meat. It might collect a little bit on the outside of the seasonings, but as far as smoke flavor penetrating down into your proteins, you're not gonna get nearly as much with a super thick layer of seasoning. So next time, try going a little lighter with your seasoning, see if you get better smoke. And then if you want that pop of flavor, add it on towards the end. Season a little bit, add you a barbecue sauce to those ribs, set that sauce, and I promise you, you're gonna be impressed. Try that one out, let me know what you think. All right, so we've just got a couple left, and the next one is one that I practice pretty religiously, and that is using a spritz. What happens is, is you get your ribs or your pork butt or whatever it is that you're trying to smoke into the smoker, and before you know it, you look in there, and that nice shiny look that it used to have has gone dry. And so what has happened is, is all the surface moisture has dried out, and the moisture on the inside has not got hot enough yet to where it's cooking out of the surface. So what you need to do is replace that with a spritz, and when it's wet, things stick better, right? I mean, I think we all know that. When things are wet, things stick better. And so you spritz it a little bit and that helps smoke grab a hold of the protein and get stuck on there as opposed to just rolling over something dry and not creating a bark and not penetrating in. So put a little light coating of whatever you want, really. A lot of people just use water. I typically will go with a 50-50 of apple cider vinegar and water and I get great results that way. Try that combined with the less seasoning technique and let me know what you think. And so this last um, technique for how to get more smoke flavor onto your barbecue, it might seem the most self-explanatory, but it is also so profoundly different um, than other ways that you can do it. And you can also combine all these other techniques with this final technique to get the most smoke flavor out of your pellet smoker and onto your barbecue. And that is to just cook low and slow. I enjoy low and slow food so much better most of the time on my pellet smoker than I do if I go hot and fast just because of the flavor difference. That's one thing. And then also I tend to like the texture better of a super low slow cook as well. But if you super low and slow 200 to 225 chicken, it's extra tender, it's got more flavor and it's just better. You're not gonna get the crispiness of the skin that you get with a super hot cook. But that just depends on where your priorities are. If you're all about that crispy skin and the flavor of the seasoning, go hot and fast. If you're wanting that smoke penetration and you just want a really tender, juicy bite of chicken, go low and slow. Let me know what you think about the comparison between those two. Just remember that you can, like I said, you can combine all of these methods and optimize your smoky flavor in your barbecue. One more thing I wanna throw out there to you guys, especially if you're new to the pellet smoking world, is that you need to sit down and accept the fact that you've got a pellet smoker, right? And a pellet smoker is a different animal than like a stick burner offset cooker that you see some of these people using. Pellet smokers are gonna produce a certain type of product. But don't get all frustrated because the product that you get on your pellet smoker isn't the same as the product someone gets on an offset stick burner. It's two different types of cookers. It's two different types of products being burned. And it's two different methods. You get a lot of convection cooking in a pellet smoker. It's just gonna be different, but I can promise you this. Employ these methods, watch my videos or other YouTube videos that you find that teach you 
proper technique and timing and you will produce some awesome, awesome barbecue that will have you and all the people that you know giving you rave reviews. Let me know if you enjoyed this video or if you benefited from it down in the comment section down below. Make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, come over to American Smoke Carnivores on Facebook. It's a great barbecue, comedy, just uh, kinship oriented type of a group. And I welcome all of you to come over. Thanks for watching, smoke on, and I'll see y'all in the next video.